Hi everybody, welcome to Patrick Scale Studio. My name is Patrick, and I'll be your host. Um, this is video build build video number nine, uh, following build video number eight, of course, which is where we attach the decks down to the hole. Um, that's all squared away, good to go. I think I ended that showing you two propellers. We've got to put those under the hole. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that soon or if I'm going to wait until I've got the hull and the ship mounted on its forever base. Um, we'll see. At any rate, uh, this is going to be kind of a long episode. Um, and originally I was intending on getting steps 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 all completed on the ship and done so we can move on to superstructure superstructure madness uh, however that's not going to be the case um, just because it would take me a couple of hours um, I don't don't want you to have to go through that pain um, but what I did do is I got almost everything separated from its sprues cleaned up mounted and ready for paint so this would be uh, build video 9 a uh, where I show you all the parts show you how I got everything together um, and then we will uh, move on to 9b uh, next episode where we'll have everything painted and show where it goes on the ship okay so I'll go ahead and start and show you where I've what I've gotten done so far yeah I know it does <laughs> it doesn't look like much um, this is step four this right here is step five, minus the anchor chains. Uh, this is step six, right there. So um, you go about it and treat some of these things like little models just on their own, and you'll be amazed at the quality you turn out rather than just kind of cleaning them up as the single pieces they are. This right here had uh, three pieces. It's the base plastic piece, the little photo etch cover, and then uh, D62, which is the same as one of about a quadrillion bollard pieces that I'll show you here on the next stick. Uh, photo etch bending there, little photo etch piece going on top of there. It looks kind of like a wheel. Um, three pieces each on these two right here these are what the anchor chains will end into and two pieces right there it's just a piece of photo etch going on top of that and this is actually the cover for the vertical launch system missile tube area um, the earliest uh, Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyers had a collapsible crane that took up uh, three or took up the space in the vertical launch system of what would normally be three missiles. And so this right here, that little hatch, covers up the space of what would be three missiles. Um, more photo etch. These are just kind of flat pieces and little hatches. Um, these right here, uh, little wire reels, they're pretty interesting. It's a single piece of photo etch on each, and then a little plastic drum and then I uh, decided to put on my creative hat and threw a little bit of really, really thin wire around there to look like hose at that scale. Um, so photo etch bending here, here, here. These right here. Loads of fun. I'm not sure if you can tell the... Uh, by the dripping sarcasm in my voice. But uh, yeah, that was four tiny little photo etched triangles that have to get glued onto that. Good times. All right, step six here, photo etch bending, um, little photo etch, photo etch uh, wheel crank right there. Uh, this right here, this piece here comes with no backing it's just a hollow backing and um, even though the back of that would butt up against a piece of superstructure it's not right up against it I thought it looked like garbage so I figured I'd go ahead and fill that in 
another one of those uh, hatches a cover where a uh, collapsible crane would would go in the vertical launch system. So there's that one. <laughs> and then even more fun. Um, check this out. So right there, that's seven, step seven. Um, another one of those little awesome uh, wire wire reels or hose reels. This piece was loads of fun here. Um, two pieces of, can you even see that or make that out? We'll see. I don't know. Nope. I need something darker. All right. Let's see here. Um, trying to get this into focus. Sorry, guys. Um, the camera's not bad. I think it's just user error here. Um, two pieces of photo etch. They're each about a hair thin, and then that gets slotted onto this teeny tiny little piece of plastic. That was loads of fun, too. All right, a couple of pieces of photo etch that needed bent. All right, and then because step eight, nine, and ten are all pretty much the same thing, which is parts D54 and D62 over and over and over and over and over and over again. With the notable exception of D55. But anyway. 8, 9, and 10. There's 8, 9, and 10. I still have to get the D55s taken care of. Um, I'm going to cover uh, construction of these later on in this build video. Those come up in step 11. We'll also lightly touch on these uh, safety walls right here. It's just a lot of photo etch. Um, I can't tell you how useful these things are. Uh, just If you don't have one, try it out for yourself. Save your eyes. Save yourself a headache later. Uh, this right here looks like some photo etch bending. A couple parts that go together. And then this right here, this piece of plastic that goes down on top of that. And that mounts to right there. So we'll touch base on these. Um, You'll see me put these together, and then we'll uh, fold the stairs. And that will cover this video, this episode. We'll get all the parts done, mounted, and taped down to a stick, and getting ready for paint. Um, and then next video, everything will be painted, and we'll slap it down onto the ship. So with that, let's go ahead and get started here with putting together these Harpoon missile launchers right here. Launchers. See, there are two of these assemblies that go on the back of the ship. Uh, they're comprised of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different pieces. I'll show you this here. This right there under step 11. And in order to accomplish that, you get four of the Z N sprues. That'll give you eight tubes and four complete frame sets. You'll have spare frame pieces, which is fine and well and good. But if you're careful, you shouldn't require any of them. They're uh, not real super tiny. They won't go pinging off into the uh, carpet. So and they're relatively straightforward and easy to put together. Like I said, you get four of these right here. This is the, these are the only parts you won't get spare of, so don't mess these up. These right here, you get plenty of spares. So go ahead and show you a completed assembly. That's it right there. And it stands like that on the ship. But that's that, and when it's all done, said, completed, we'll paint this the regular main hull color of the ship, and then uh, we'll pick out some small little details. Um, harpoon launcher. So just to give you a little bit of background and feedback on the harpoon launcher, it's known in the Navy as the Mark 141 
guided missile launching system and it is for launching harpoon missiles. The harpoon missiles are an anti-ship missile uh, all weather over the horizon so kind of one of those deals where it looks like it's a fire and forget kind of kind of weapon here for for this destroyer. And you're able to just fire it, maneuver around, and get out of harm's way. All right, so I've already taken the liberty of cutting some of the parts out here and cleaning some of these up. The tubes. There's the frame. However, I will go over cutting out the parts and any spots that uh, are going to require attention for cleanup. Especially because I still need two more tubes to complete the second launcher assembly. I'll go over this here now. I found the best way to cut these out, these top frames here, which are very delicate looking. Um, start here, start at the very top. Just a couple of little snips there. All right, after that's done, you can kind of push these down and out of the way of this stub and then move on to cutting the rest of the frames out. You see that right there is on these attachment tabs for where they'll fit into this base. All right those take it off there all right so the frames aren't going to require a lot of cleanup except you will want to make sure you remove any excess material from the bottom here with these attachment tabs so just a quick run over with a sanding stick should do the trick relatively small little pieces of plastic won't require a lot of pressure won't require a lot of sanding Additionally, you'll have this teeny tiny little nub right here to cut off. And that looks like it's mainly just an overflow nub for when they inject the uh, plastic into the mold. It has somewhere for that additional extra plastic to go to. When I say plastic, I really mean styrene, but styrene is plastic. Not all plastic is styrene, but styrene all styrene is plastic, if that makes sense. And so again, you can clean these up a touch up there where those little stubs are if you can make them out and see them. Personally, for me, really have to get in there with an optivizer or something like that to make it out. And then as soon as you get everything attached to it, it's going to be even more difficult to make that out. So that's where that would be right there. As you can see, I didn't really perform a lot of cleanup or anything like that when I put this together. For the most part, they're pretty clean after that. And then here's the base. Just like on the other parts, try to cut it off very close to the part. And you're left with not a whole lot of cleanup to do. And that also has these lovely little overflow stubs. And you take a sanding stick, run it over those attachment points. Everything nice and smooth. And voila. And believe it or not, a lot of these little stubs that you cut off can easily be mixed up with other parts. So it's best if you find a way of moving those to a spot where you not mixing them with other parts. I will point out how those look like other parts here after this. Okay. 
same deal here. Cutting it off nice and close to the attachment spots on the sprue. And then just take a sharp exacto knife and go in here and clean up these attachment points. All right, and then for that right there where those attachment points are, just again, easy sanding stick. Kind of run over it until those little stubs disappear completely. All right, they're gone. Now, one thing I did notice here when I was putting together this right here is these pieces fit into these frames like so. And see those two attachment points, right? Let's see if I can get this so you can see it. Right there and there is where these little nubs fit. Not the greatest fit at all right there. With a little bit of solvent, a little bit of cement, in time they would definitely conform to that. A little bit of pressure and cement. But they will fit a lot better if while you're here you work on those. And I was able to just kind of thin them out a little bit. Now, if we test fit that again, we should see a marked difference. Yep. Much, much better fit. All the way, both spots, much better fit. The glue will start holding that in place and attach it firmly from the get-go without any pressure. So, a couple of pain points on that. Just make sure you thin these down to where they attach. Test fit. Test fit often. All right. Part number five on the ZN sprue. It's like the other one. Cleanup's pretty straightforward. Got our attachment points right there and right there. And a sanding stick should make quick work. And the exact same fashion as the other part, you want to ensure that this is going to fit in there where it's supposed to fit in there. There's our frame piece. And this would fit in there like that. Again, it's not very tight right now, so just taking a, another minute to clean that joint up, to thin it out a little bit. These parts are so tiny, they can be difficult to pick up. But just taking a few extra seconds or a minute to 
clean that up. And now it fits in there so much better. A clean fit here right now is going to be imperative in order to get these tubes to sit down on that framework properly. And tubes themselves are the most involved of all the cleanup. Just going to start there. Work our way around. And getting these freed from the sprue. And getting all these little nubs detached. I have no more parts on that sprue. So I can go ahead and start working on getting these parts detached from one another. Now you might as you might be thinking here, if you're looking at these instructions, they're different part numbers, ZN6, ZN7. And they're marked like that here as well, ZN6, ZN7. Six is on the top, seven's on the bottom. And you're like, well, how will you know the difference here? Because they look very similar. They do look very similar. Um, however, seven, ZN7, has these little attachment tabs on top of them, whereas the N6, no attachment tabs, since those are the, the top two. These are the bottom two. ZN6 will sit on top of ZN7. So there's attachment slots there to fit to those attachment tabs. That's how you tell the two apart. So you can free all the parts, do all the cleanup, and then move on to assembling everything at once. Or you can detach and assemble as you'd like. There's no prescribed order here. It's really how you feel best doing it. I will show you clean up here on one of these. Clean up's really the same on both, but the gotchas. I'll show you on one of them. Then we'll move on to actually getting it assembled. So I'm going to take a sanding stick, just hit each side of it real quick where the attachment points were. We want that to be nice and flat and smooth. Same thing here. And again, if you are working on seven don't sand the top tabs off don't sand these attachment tabs off because this is how they go together like that so don't sand those off if you're working on seven and after you've gotten those sides smoothed down like that I found it easiest to then go on each side where there's the molding seam with my hobby blade one kind of hit the sides of these little square frame pieces and just turn my knife up to try to get rid of any nasty little mold seams there. And then you can take the knife right here and gently scrape it along where that seam is. And it just disappears. Yes, you will be left with a slight flat spot. And we've got another quick step to address that. There is a little nub right there from some of the sprue. Okay, so 
once you've gotten that done, then you can take a sanding sponge. I went with 600 grit and just lightly went over all those areas where I scraped. And kind of help make those marks from where you scrape with your knife. It'll make those areas disappear. compare I don't know how well that comes out but side by side you can see one has the mold seam this one does not is it the world's best job of cleanup eh, probably not but I'm going to do the same exact thing here and if you take a look at this here it passes the one foot rule. I'm looking at it from a foot away and I don't have any problems with that at all. It looks good. It looks clean. So on each one of these, you've got two sides. So I did the one side there. Make sure you hit the other side, same way, all the tubes. And then when you get everything ready to go, you'll be ready to assemble. So I'm going to finish cleaning these up. I'll be right back. All right, as I was saying, I'm going to show you how some of these little nibs that come off of the parts look very similar to actual parts. This is part D62. I'm stuck on the end of these needle nose tweezers. Um, and for the most part, it's just one of a pair of bollards that go into many spots on the ship's hull. And it looks very, very similar to one of those little attachment points. So. All righty, on to getting this sucker put together. Another interesting facts I read about the RGM 84. I believe that's what it's called. RGM 84. Yep, harpoon. Is that uh, it's nautical range is approximately 50 nautical miles and that's uh over the horizon and then that's quite a bit of distance there's definitely different models of the harpoon also that are employed by various countries or various weapons platforms harpoons can be carried by uh be carried on submarines and launched through torpedo tubes. So instead of being an RGM, it's then a UGM 84. It can also be carried on an airplane. If it's carried on an airplane, then it's an AGM 84. Airplanes can carry it to be like a uh, A6 intruder or an F16. Um, let's see, B-52s, looks like P-3 Orions, S-3 Vikings, and Harrier, Hornets. So quite a bit can carry these missiles. It also said, though, that uh, they were carried on a majority of U.S. Navy surface vessels. So oh, that is quite a quite a capability and a single single weapon system carried on surface vessels, submarines, and airplanes. Um, and besides just being effective against surface vessels, I also read that uh, they've been employed against uh, land-based targets as well. So again, pretty versatile.
most of these facts come from an online resource there. I've posted a link on every single one of my build videos for this ship. I find that it's incredibly helpful to kind of know a little bit about what it is you're modeling. Well, it helps put that touch of care into what you're doing. It helps you to know the intended purpose for the system. But along with that, helpful to have pictures of the actual thing. See what the actual thing looks like. All right. So all I did here was get the two side frames ZN2 and ZN1 attached to the base, which is ZN3. This base is what sits on the deck of the ship. The completed assembly, that's what we've got done so far. The next portion of this might be easier to hold than something else without having to apply constant pressure. There we go. Alright. Everything there's red relatively well lined up. Now we can take this part here. Now if you're concerned about the knockout mark or the extractor mark, um, you can rest assured that no one's really going to see that. Again, here's the finished assembly. And where that is, is right there. Right underneath where those tubes are. So you're not going to see the ejector pin mark. Not at all. All right, so go ahead and get this fitted on there. When you're doing things on camera, the parts have a real good tendency to not behave the way you want them to in the way that you've already done it on a previous assembly. However, this one side seems to have lined up well. So we'll go ahead and touch a little bit of glue to it. I'll let the capillary action work on drawing the joints together. Okay. The frame is put together. The frame is ready to go. Oh, I say that, yet there is one last piece that goes on it, which is this piece right here. This back piece. Go ahead and put him into place. Ooh. There we go. Again, note how with a little bit of cleanup, the fit in there is nice. The fit is as it's intended to be. Where I don't have to worry about applying pressure or any unnecessary force 
to get that to sit in the way it should. So take tweezers there and examine this all over. It looks good. And if you compare with images of the real thing online, you'll see that it lines up pretty well. It looks pretty good. It's a very, very good approximation, especially without any photo etch. With El Pontos or the Mark I sets, any of those sets of photo etch and decking that cost a couple hundred dollars. Doesn't really need it so much. Everything looks pretty good and pretty clean. So again, this is uh, ZN7. This is one of the bottom tubes. It's uh, seated on there. Good connection. Bit of the to me extra thin. So go in there, wick into the joint. Same thing on the back end here. Okay. Go ahead and get the other ZN7, which is right here. Same thing for it. Mount it on there. Go ahead and apply some glue. Glue, cement. Solvent, sorry, whatever you want to call it, it goes. There's going to be sticklers out there for what something's actually called. For the most part, I'm just concerned that it does the job. Life's too short. All right. ZN6, go on top. in there. Okay, so that's on there now. Go ahead and put the last piece, the second ZN6, in the place. There we go. the most part without putting any pressure down I'll just kind of sit on top of that while you put the glue in and then you can press it into place and it'll largely click into place you can feel it make sure that matches up okay two identical assemblies that's all there is to it to these 
Harpoon missile launchers. So the next thing we'll look into are going to be these triple torpedo tube mounts. See you here in a minute. So here we'll go ahead and examine the this triple torpedo tube mount. And specifically, it's called the Mark 32 surface vessel torpedo tubes. There's two of these on the ship for it starboard. To get through these, I Love Kit gives you two of these sprues. It's the ZL sprues. There's only four parts on each. There is one fifth part that will come in the form of a photo etch piece. The completed assembly looks like that. Nothing particularly tricky on getting this assembled. However, I did find a build preference that I preferred. These torpedo tubes can be made to fit either the Mark 46 torpedo, Mark 50 torpedo, or Mark 54 torpedo. I think that was pretty interesting information. I'll go ahead and start off. We'll go ahead and start getting these freed up and parts separated. Nothing too tricky with separating these parts. Although I definitely recommend holding off on cutting out the photo wedge part until you are actually ready to attach it. There's a larger sprue attachment point, so I'll cut that back a little bit. There's another one of these nubs, and it looks just exactly like actual parts. Interesting that in between the harpoon launchers and these torpedo tube mounts, there are six sprues of parts that we're now free of. And so cleanup on this here just consists of very carefully trimming away that attachment point. If you look very close here, I don't even know if the camera is going to pick this up. Let's see here. Underneath that, for contrast, you can see there's these teeny tiny, itty bitty little rivet details on there. I'm going to do your very best not to mess those up. So, something like an optivizer. or a digital microscope or one of those nice mounted desk mounted backlit magnifying glasses would be good for assisting your eyes in cleaning this up properly just want to make sure you're very delicate when you do it so you don't screw up that tiny little bit of rivet detail. It would be very easy to do. Just one swipe of an exacto knife blade. And you've got all that lovely detail that'd be lost, just like that. So I've got that to end up off of there. I'm very carefully sand this back a little bit. Again, trying to avoid any of that wonderful molded on detail. Other 
side here. Again, sanding sponge here to the rescue. And just kind of gently polish up the areas where our X-Acto knife blade's been and that sanding stick has been. There we go. That part's cleaned up. We go with this part here. Just tiny little stubs right there. Okay. Same thing on this side here. It seems odd when you look at pictures of these online of the real thing. You see how big they are. It definitely seems odd that they are so, so tiny in what we're doing right now. All right, and then we'll come along and get rid of some seam lines. And other side seam line. Okay. Over here. All righty. that right there okay yeah I'm gonna go ahead and go over that now with a sanding sponge as well again just being very careful to make sure we avoid deleting any of that wonderful detail already molded in. And I'd, I really am not exaggerating. If uh, this isn't coming in as clearly as you or I would like, I'm not exaggerating when I say that the detail on this would definitely rival pieces of resin I've seen out there aftermarket for other kits. That's two tubes completed, or I'm sorry, the three tubes completed, the two parts completed as far as the cleanup goes. Here is the little piece that turns. And you will, all this piece that mounts to the deck. There's only just the one attachment point right there that needs cleaned up. The nice part about it is that some of these parts down here aren't super noticeable. That doesn't mean I'm going to put any less care into making sure they're cleaned up properly. But a slip up with an X-Acto knife won't be the end of the world for this assembly. Just a single attachment point on this part as well.
And same thing. Not super visible. I'll still try to put all the care I can into making sure it looks right. However, a single mistake there is not going to break it. When I was assembling this, I found the easiest way to go about doing this. This fits into there. It's a tiny little pin. But I found it easier to attach this tube here, these two bottom tubes, to that little base. So we'll go ahead and get our Tamiya extra thin. Just paint a little drop onto there. Pick a part up. Line the holes up. There's a big and a small hole. Line them up. He's on there now. There's no wrong or right way to put this on. Maybe the next step. Oops. There we go. that. Now I can hold on to that. And one of the more visible parts here, the very top tube. You don't have to worry about trying to like glue while holding a base in my fingers. There we go. Okay, so for the most part, that is done, except for the piece of photo wedge. It goes on there. So, I'll go ahead and put this over here for now. And if we look at our finished assembly here, A piece of photo etch it's on this side. All right, so I'll put him there for right now. One thing I'll not complain about with Hobby Boss or Trumpeter or I Love Kits is their photo wet sheets. They protect in the front and the back. It is very thin plastic coating. It makes it nice. The parts don't get scuffed up. Or if they get loose or they're tiny little parts, they don't get lost very easily. I'll go ahead and cut the photo etch part B3 loose from its fret. All right, it's loose. We do have some cleanup to do on the part, but it's fairly minimal. It just boils down to finding the attachment points and cutting them off. Very, very hard granite tile, nice and mirror smooth on top, and a rounded X Acto blade. 
It'll help me cut that off and I do it actually rock the blade a little bit and it helps cut it versus just forcing a blade directly through it there's actually a slicing motion so like that you can go ahead and start bedding this you don't need anything this fancy for a part this tiny what we're doing is bedding the sides up and again great time to have an optivizer or a mounted and backlit magnifying glass. These parts are so small. Okay, so with that, we can put that into place. And there's, if you can see here, there is this little plate right there which is this where this is supposed to fit over and it's in place and once it's in place it won't go anywhere else it won't go wandering actually apologies it looks like I've got that upside down Just like I just got done saying, it won't go anywhere. All right. Okay. So that's in place now. When I attach this, I use a thin, super thin CA. This will cure them one to three seconds. Not always the case between brass and plastic, but applied in very tiny little amounts, such as with this dropper, it does the trick very well. I'll try to do this without making a mess. So the other helpful tool coming with CA is a debonder. Such as anything in life, I'm trying to show it off. Not going to go as smoothly as I'd like, but it's just the way it is. Okay. So now that that's really in place and it's not coming off, I can finish gluing this in place with the CA glue. And then I can use some debonder to clean up all the ugly spots where. the CA glue is that I don't want it to be. All right, so I'm going to let that CA glue cure. I'm going to go in with super solvent, clean that up. Be right back in a few seconds. Okay, so the next part that we're going to work on here, well, best I'm going to work on it individually off this camera so I can actually put my head down and see and not get in the way of this camera. But it's going to be this part right here and what this looks like is it looks like just kind of a blast shield that's going to separate where these harpoon missiles go on the back of the ship uh, away from you know some of the other stuff right here looks like just a blast shield so 
Um, it is comprised of one large piece of photo etch, D76, four small little triangles, C30, and another triangle, which is D80. Um, there's 76, 80, here's this four C30s right there. Um, and it looks like each of the ends just do a 90 degree bend inward. This, this right here also does another degree inward, about 90 degrees. And then this piece here folds over kind of like a, uh, a railing that would go along the top. And notice these uh, little triangles here. We can get one off. There it is. There's these little grooves etched in, and it looks like these little triangles go right into those grooves. So I just sit those in there with a little bit of glue, and then hit it with a little bit of thin CA, and then maybe hit it with a little bit of accelerator so we can get this locked into place. And then we can come along with some of the super solvent and clean away any of the extra um, that we don't want, don't need, that would be unsightly. So I'm going to go ahead and get this constructed. I will show you the finished result of this and then introduce the next photo etch uh, photo etch exercise be back in just a second here's the finished piece I'm not gonna lie it wasn't terribly hard to put together just a little bit of super glue medium Gap filling super glue applied sparingly to the parts. Parts slotted into the thing. Everything bent into place. This top rail over bent a little bit, and then this piece bent in to form the L, and then filled everything with super thin CA. After everything set using a little bit of the Insta Set, I was able to come back with solvent and clean up the excess super glue and it looks pretty good i don't understand why this couldn't have been done with injection molded styrene but it doesn't look bad and i think in a day and age where kit manufacturers are trying to up the price up the desire and up the skill level on their kits uh they're just throwing as much photo etch as they can at at the kits and said so it, it's not terrible um, it could have been injection molded though, but there it is on to the next adventure. Okay. Second blast shield here, which they label as 11 right there. Three pieces D seven, eight and two C 12s. Looks like we are going to take D78, and we're going to bend the ends inward, slot the two C12s into these little slots there, and then this folds down over top, kind of as like a nice little handrail. So, uh, just like the last one, I'm not going to do this while on camera. It just seems like I nothing to work out while I'm actually doing it. I need to put my head down. So, um, be back here in a second or two with the finished product. Okie doke. There's our finished product. Um, it was in focus, of course, before it started recording, uh, such as life. At any rate, that is another blast shield is labeled as kind of part conglomeration number 11 in the instructions, destructions, if you please. Uh, but there it is. Not a whole lot to it. Went together pretty easily. So next up, we are going to be working on this part right here. Go ahead and get the parts cut out and be right back. Okay, and the last assembly for step 11 is this little doodad right here. Uh, two photo wedge pieces and three plastic pieces. I've already taken the liberty of getting these out and cleaned up. There they are in all their glory. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead off camera and get these assembled and cleaned up, and I'll show you the finished product when it's all said and done. Be back in a sec. 
Alrighty, and little table things all finished up. Let's see if I can get this to focus for you. Maybe it's just not going to, but that's really about the size of it. Just those five parts. The little table thingy with legs, the top plate that goes over it, and then the three little plastic pieces that all nest into the little spots set about for it. So this will now go on to one of those sticks with the tape all over it so it can be ready for paint. Um, next up, and I think last for this video, is going to be showing you how to fold these stairs, D73 and D74. So let me get those cut out. I'll be right back. Okay, so the last things that I'm going to work on in this episode, which again, we're calling 9A, D73, D74. Uh, if you look at the instructions, you know them because D74 has the tiny little platform walkway at the very top of it, or, you know, at the top of the ladder, and 73 does not. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to demonstrate how to bend one of these on camera, and then we'll go into, well, and then I will do so uh, for the other one on my own. So bending tool here is a fantastic tool to use. I'll just find the tweezers now. I'm going to go ahead and get this settled in to where we can bend the rails up. If you have a look at there, what I've done is, and kind of telegraph this onto that right there, um, I've put the rail underneath the jaw of this bending tool. It's clamped down nice and tight. So now I can take a straight razor blade that comes with this, slide it under there ever so gently. Here we go, 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle, there we go. So now that's done, undo it, pull this out, all right, next, other side, I'm going to go ahead, and you know what, actually, because that railing will butt into that right there. I'm go ahead and spin this around to where I've got more clearance. Slide this under there. So again, we want that railing trapped underneath the jaw here. And the photo etch metal, the little fold area or whatever you want to call it, is not super strong. So I'm not super worried about not having a straight edge completely solid along the way of that rail. This should bend regardless. I guess we'll see here in a minute, won't we? All right, so again. That other railing is trapped underneath there. And look at that. He's right. Didn't really need it. So 90 degree bend. Okay. All right. So the cool thing about these stairs is you're wondering, are we done yet? We're not. We're not close to being done yet. So each one of these individual stairs you take your tweezers I believe these are called treads and just start holding these treads up 
one by one. Yeah, I know, a little tedious. But we want it to look more like stairs, don't we? Want to look a lot less like a ladder with ultra thick rungs and a lot more like an actual staircase. One thing I do like about these photo etched stairs is they're very much in a good scale thickness. All right, so there we go. And there is our completed staircase. As you can see, the top tread is a little warped. I'll probably play with that a little bit to see if I can get it straightened out, but that staircase can now go on the back of the ship. It goes right above. It goes right where that rear bulkhead is that we did a little detail painting on. It'll sit right there like that. And again, perfect scale, perfect scale size. So I'm going to do the other one off camera. They're both going to get glued down to, uh, or not glued down, but they're both going to get stuck down to those sticks I've got with the tape uh, where I'm readying things for painting. Um, with metal parts, they got to get primed. Um, probably just prime everything, though, uh, and then we'll spray everything the, the colors they're supposed to be in. Some things we'll end up gluing down. Um, after they've gotten their base coat on, and then we'll do any little detail painting or anything like that. Um, for instance, these bollards, they're all upside down right now. So when I put them under the hull of the ship, there's a tiny little cap, and the little cap gets painted the darker gray. But the uh, main color of these is going to be the regular hull color, which is the XF-12. So that, that's what I'm talking about here. We'll get all these painted XF-12, get them glued down, and then we'll detail paint the tops of them with that darker gray. A lot of the other stuff has got a little bit of detail painting to go here and there also. But, um, yeah, that's going to be it for build video 9A. Uh, build video 9B is where everything's going to be painted, and we'll go ahead and get it stuck down, and I'll show you the painting steps I'm going to take. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode. As always, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, uh, suggestions, anything you think I can improve upon, please feel free to leave that feedback in the comments here for the video. Uh, your feedback is only going to help me get better. So I appreciate you joining me. Sorry for the long episode. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks again.